Coach, what's your prophetic insight regarding the eclipse on April 8th? Thank you. I think it's all good. It's all good. We're going from dark to light, right? We're we're coming into a new time, a new season. You know, Jesus said these signs would be, uh, these signs would happen, you know? And it's a, it's a time where we know the first eclipse went across the United States and went across the areas now, uh, named Salem, which means peace and wholeness, right? All right. And now the eclipses are going across, like they're making like a big X, right? Like a big X. And now it's going across uh, uh, towns uh, that are named, uh, one of them is named Nineveh. And I just had a prophetic word about Nineveh and Jonah and the whale being beached uh, on the shore. It's a sign of Jonah. It's a sign of God's plans and purposes are going forth. It's a sign that he's He's called us to repentance. He's, he's uh, uh, giving us grace and mercy. And um, an X, all right, is a, a biblical a biblical X, all right, is a, is a good thing. It's a good sign, okay? Um, it's not a bad sign. So these are just signs of us coming into a new timing, right? A new timing and a, a good timing where the kingdom is coming to earth, where uh, biblical signs and seasons where we went from the dark into the light, the kingdom of God is coming to earth. We're coming into our our, our time of, of peace and shalom and healing. And that even though our sins have been many, uh, because we repented and because our, our good uh, leaders have called us to repentance, our godly leaders have called us to repentance, we have what? Grace and mercy. Right, just like Jonah did with the people of Nineveh. So, America has been founded for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. America is a sister to Jerusalem. And uh, we are to come beside Jerusalem in these days and come beside Israel in these days. Uh, and um, remember, Jesus said this would happen. And it's what? The end of an age, an end of an age. And we're coming into a new age, the kingdom age, meaning we are going to be doing signs, wonders, miracles. We're going to be actually finally coming into who we truly are in Christ Jesus, walking in his authority completely, right? And this, this beautiful harvest and of souls for Jesus Christ and the people that were angry that wanted to say hateful words about America. You see, there were a lot of people that said, oh, you know, America must be doomed. America this, America that. I cancel those words in the name of Jesus Christ. No, God has given us a chance to repent, just like he did Nineveh, right? He gave us a chance to repent, and we did. And we poured the blood of Jesus Christ over everything. You see, and, and and Jesus is marking things in the in the in the heavens in the sand. Okay, so when Jesus was came on the scene, and the woman that was in adultery was getting stoned. All right, I want you to just connect this prophetic meaning. Okay, when the woman was getting stoned, and um, women can also represent a nation or a a bride or a bride of Christ. So when they were stoning this woman, the religious leaders of that day, hatefully, Jesus came on the scene and what did he do? He drew a line in the sand and he started writing in the sand. What did he write in the sand? I believe, and many biblical scholars believe, he wrote the sins of those who were stoning that woman. He knew their sins. They were condemning her. But when Jesus comes on the scene, what does he do? Mm -mm. He marks it. He draws a line of sail. Right? With his finger. And he says, ah, 
I'm going to point out your sins to you. And once he did that, they were shocked that he knew their sins. And they each dropped their stones and walked away. And what did he do? He reached out his hand to that woman. And he said, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus is drawing the line in the sand with the eclipse. That's what I discern it is. That, that's what I believe it is. He is drawing that line in the sand. And he's saying, I've heard your repentance. I do not condemn you. I do not condemn you, America, my beauty. I've given you a chance to repent, and you repented. Even though you've been sinful, but now you're, you come back to me. Right? We're coming back to Jesus. There is revival sweeping across this nation. We're coming into the greatest of times. And it says, right, that God himself has written, has written in the stars. He's the one that put them there to speak to us. The great Maseroth. And what does the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the planets speak? What do they speak? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do your research. Do your research. Everything in the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets called the great Maseroth speaks of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming return of Jesus Christ. And everything that is spoken in the stars, the moon, the planets is the Lord himself with his fingers writing what he wants to write. And it's a line that's going across our nation. Jesus is drawing a line with his finger and saying, America, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. I've heard your repentance. Even though you've been adulterous towards me, I forgive you. And we have poured the blood of Jesus across this nation and repented. And revival is coming. So I believe the eclipse that's coming is a good sign from the Lord. And it's a sign of our redemption. It's a sign. The first eclipse was for us to come beside Jerusalem. Right? And be shalem and shalom and come beside Jerusalem and pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that this nation could be blessed. And the second sign that goes through the Nineveh is your sins have been forgiven. You've been redeemed. I've heard your repentance. I will not condemn you. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Now go and sin no more, America, and be what I've called you to be, to bring the gospel to all the world. And we're coming into this new time, this new season. Jesus, he is speaking of what he's doing in the stars. And if you don't understand... Uh, Studying the stars, this is not astrology, right? The astrology is the devil twisting things for witchcraft. I'm talking about God's astronomy, the great Maseroth that God speaks of in the book of Job, where he laid out all the stars to speak a word and all the planets to speak a word and tell his times and his seasons and what he's doing. All of creation speaks of the glory of God. Even the eclipses do. Right? Now, you can really get a good study of the gospel in the stars. And I love this teaching. It's really wonderful. Get your kids to do it too, especially if you homeschool. And it's called Looking Up by Pastor Troy Brewer. The gospel in the stars and the times in the season. And he teaches it along with the word of God and how it tells the story of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I personally believe, and prophetically, as the Holy Spirit's revealing to me right now, is that this second eclipse is Jesus drawing the line in the sand and saying, I do not condemn you, America. Right? I've heard your repentance. 
go and sin no more and be the beauty, the daughter that I've called you to be. And he's giving us a hand and lifting us up. And that woman then became a follower of Jesus Christ. And this means that Jesus is not condemning the church. He's not condemning America. He's not condemning the people. We're getting grace and mercy because we're coming into the age of the kingdom, the great harvest of souls for Jesus Christ. And revival is here. And a great light is coming upon us. That's the light of Christ where the kingdom of God is coming to earth, to us, the believers. And it's beautiful. And so those people that condemned America and said, oh, you know, no, Jesus did not condemn us. We repented. And so it is for Jerusalem, too. You see, every miracle that Jesus did was a prophetic act for what's going on right now. The woman with the issue of blood was the bleeding church. <laughs> Jairus' daughter, right? It was a, a picture also of the church of Jesus Christ that was in a, she is only sleeping, but I'm going to wake her up. Of the church awakening. Kumi, arise daughter and give her something to eat. We're going to be hungry for what? Jesus, for the gospel, for the word. You see it happening, and it's beautiful, and it's glorious, and these are the best of times. And this is why we must be serious about our purpose for the Lord right now, especially if you're called up to do a home church, especially if you're called up to build a ministry, especially if you're called up to do a kingdom business that's going to be sowing into the kingdom. And the wealth of the wicked is getting stripped and given to the righteous. For what? To use for, the, for God to do what he's called us to do. My friends, we're in the greatest, most amazing of times. Rejoice. 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 See, we don't do gloom and doom around here. Why? I'll tell you why. Because God is good and he's faithful. And Jesus Christ already won the victory for us. And you know what happens when you believe the gloom and doom instead of believing God in the good? Makes God angry. Go back to the children of Israel. Hmm? What happened? What happened when the children of Israel believed the bad report? God said, well, they don't believe me. They don't believe in my promises. And they got angry. But Moses interceded for them. See? And Caleb and Joshua said, we have God. We're not scared of those giants. We're not scared of those fierce armies. We're not, we don't care. The gloom and doom is nothing for us. You know why? Because we have God. And those, those giants will be bread for us. We have God. You have God. I have God. We have God. Focus on the good. Focus on your good, good father. Come on. Get out of the gloom and doom. Stop it. Stop it. Woo! An eclipse. Woo! Woo! Stop it. It's just Jesus writing a line in the sand. Woo! Because the good is coming. An eclipse happened when the greatest, the greatest work of Jesus Christ and Father God happen against the devil. When Jesus died on the cross and said it's finished, an eclipse came. Hmm? You want to know the biblical, biblical meaning of eclipse? I'll tell you what. The biblical meaning of eclipse is the greatest transaction of God against the devil. Come on, it's good. 
Every time the devil sees an eclipse, all his demons start to tremble because they remember what happened on the cross. Good reminder. Hey, devil, remember when uh, you got tromped, smashed, destroyed by the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ? And an eclipse came? Let me remind you, devil, another eclipse is coming. And guess what? It's just to remind you of your defeat. Bow the knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May I remind you, devil, you are defeated. Every demon should tremble now when they see the eclipse. Be reminded of how you are already defeated from the day of the cross of Jesus Christ. You see? Victory mindset. Victory mindset. Ding, 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 ding. Victory mindset. So eclipses are not bad. Demons tremble when they see the eclipse. Why? Give them a good memory of how they got destroyed the day of the cross of Jesus Christ because an eclipse happened that day. Hallelujah. 